Hello guys, this is going to be another video on the flasher unit idea for your static models or your RC vehicles and what I've done is made up a little prototype board on FR4 and we're going to add the different components here and test out that uh, that this uh, prototype will actually work. The board that I'm testing today is just a little prototype board that I made from a little uh, FR4 board, 1.52mm thick, uh, double sided copper and uh, you can pick these up on eBay pretty cheaply. I have a little milling machine that I use to make the uh, make the PCBs and or to make the prototypes and you can see that it's pretty accurate. But obviously when uh, for the final board I'm gonna send these the files that I use to make this off to a PCB manufacturer and they'll make it properly. There's no connections between the front and the rear contacts in my design here. I've basically just milled away some copper on the front and back side of the board here. So in the actual design there are connections through so each hole that you see there should have a connection through to the other side and when the final PCB manufacturer does that they will put a connection through. They'll add a little bit of metal that goes through the board in each of these holes. So that when you solder the component in, it's soldered the entire way through the board. And that means that we can use both the front and the rear side to connect to the different components. So I'm going to have to add a little bit of wire or something into some of these pins. My original plan had been to design a surface mount board and have it fully assembled and manufactured so that we were left with just the board ready to go but after the follow or the previous video uh, you guys seem to want a board that was either uh, a kit form so you got the board and the different components or you just bought the board and you could find the components for yourself so that seemed to be what you guys wanted so I designed this um, the benefit to just buying the PCB will be obviously that you can choose the different components yourself so uh, you'll probably ch choose the same chip but you could change change these capacitors and resistors to give different frequencies if you wanted them so so I've designed this board if you if you have any more feedback on this you can shoot over to the forum and give your comments or suggestions there and I'll take them into consideration because uh, obviously I haven't sent this off for manufacturer yet because I haven't tested it so we'll make the prototype here and see if the board or if this design is going to work well and if we get the frequencies that we wanted. I'll record soldering the different components to the board but you have to remember that this one doesn't have the connections between the front and the rear so this won't be how you'll solder the final board it be a lot easier to to solder the final manufactured board because it will have vias between the front and rear of the board we need them so you'll only have to solder on one side whereas I'm going to have to try and solder both sides of the board to some of these pins so don't take this as a guide on how to build the, the final product I'll do another video of how to do that when I have the final final proper board I'm going to be using a fairly thick solder and the only reason for that is that I don't have any other solder here at the minute it's all I have left so if you're starting out especially you might want to use a well you definitely will want to use a, a thinner strand of solder it'll make the soldering a lot easier If you were putting this in a tractor, this would be as far as you'd go. You'd have all the components soldered on and you'd just solder your wires for your LEDs into these holes here. 
but because I want this as a prototype to test it, I'm gonna solder some uh, some pin headers in here, and that'll let me put it into a breadboard. That should be everything wired up now. It wasn't exactly the tidiest soldering job ever, but uh, it's not too bad. Hopefully it'll work. Obviously when you come to soldering the finished board, it'll have a solder mask, so you won't be able to create solder jumpers. And you won't have to do any of these wires. These these are only for the uh, connections from the rear to the front of the board that I couldn't do underneath the pins here. The chip here is a TS556, by the way. In case you need to look that up. So that one should operate from 2 volts I think. So we have a 3.7 volt battery here. And we are hooked up to the scope. I have my probe here so we'll check which side we have here. I'm not sure. This is obviously the lower side. Uh, it looks to be around about 1.6 hertz. So this is for the indicators. So this side is for the indicators. Which means the other side should be a faster frequency. We should up at 6 hertz I think it was. Or I used a 51k resistor here. So it should be a little bit faster I think. So it looks like we have around about 8 hertz on this side. So I'll get some LEDs and we'll see how that works. <coughs> I added an LED to test the indicator frequency. So with the LED going to our resistor here, going to ground. And as you can see, our LED is probably a little bit too fast. We've seen that the frequency was about 1.6 Hz, whereas previously we had 1.2. I think the 1.2 looked a little bit better. So we need to test out the the flash and the warning beacon frequency and see if it's too fast as well. We might need to redesign or choose new resistors to solve the problem. <coughs> so here's the warning beacon frequency and you can see it's a little bit faster than it was before as well and probably a little bit too fast. We could probably do with uh, getting back to the frequency, the 6 hertz that we had previously with this, uh, with this setup as well. So Probably the difference is something to do with the different chips. So we're using the TS556 chip this time. Whereas before we were using a, a 555 timer that wasn't supposed to be run at 3.7 volts. So maybe because we were running the previous timer under the specified voltage, it was operating slower than it should be. So to fix this problem, I'll have to choose some different resistor values that should bring us back into the frequency range that we need okay so I thought a little bit more about what might be wrong with this circuit and I decided to check the tolerances of the different components and I found that the 10k resistor had a 1% tolerance which is which would take it from 9.9 to 10.1k that would be the range that it could vary over and that would cause a 0.1 hertz frequency change so that's not huge it's big enough but it's not huge the 51k is also 1% and that would take us from 50.49 to 50.51k and that would only be 0 0.03 hertz so that's hardly going to be the problem but also we're seeing the frequency change on both outputs whereas the 10k is only on the higher frequency and the 51k is only on the lower frequency so it's unlikely to be those 
So the 1k is over both frequency ranges, but it's also 1% uh, tolerant, or has a 1% tolerance, which brings it from 0.99 to 1.01k, and the frequency change on that is very, very small. So it's not going to be that either. When you get round to the capacitor, the ones I've ordered are actually plus or minus 20%, so that's quite a huge tolerance range. So that'll be from 8 microfarads to 12 microfarads, which on the lower frequency is 0.58 hertz, on the upper frequency that's 2.86 hertz. So pretty sure the capacitor is where the problem is. I ordered a I did order the cheapest capacitor, so it's no surprise that the tolerance was out by so much. But uh, I should have caught that before I ordered them, but uh, these things happen. So I have my LC meter. Now, it is a very cheap LC meter. It's an uh, eBay one, so uh, it's probably not very accurate. But just to, just for a little experiment, measure a few of these capacitors. There's one 9.45 microfarads. By five three nine point five seven nine point five two nine point five four. So they're all within uh, five percent five percent tolerance of the uh, ten microfarads. So that's pretty good. Well, uh, well, it's not very good actually. <laughs> it's pretty bad. We can compare it to the capacitor we used the last time. We're getting ten point three eight microfarads. So that's about a microfarad difference between this capacitor and these capacitors. I've checked the Farnell website, and twenty percent is as accurate as you get with these ten microfarad capacitors. So these ones are as good as you can get basically so what I'll have to do is come up with a configuration of resistors and capacitors that is less sensitive at these frequencies so I'm sure there are a different combination of resistors and capacitors that won't vary as much the board design itself seems to work pretty good we will need to move these capacitors in a little bit closer to the chip I think uh, just to save a little space, there's a lot of wasted space up here I'll make it a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to fit into a model and also these pads up here are pretty big so make them a little bit smaller but other than that I think it's pretty good and it should be ready to go to a uh, manufacturer pretty soon the values of the capacitors and the resistors shouldn't change the the board layout as it is it, it's pretty good I'm working on another board design which would have this board in it there would be another bit of PCB here with a mounting hole you would have on the underside would be this little array of switches here so that would go around a bit there and then another mounting hole on this side so that you could take the bottom of your tractor here you could cut a hole out so that these switches were exposed bolt this to the bottom of your static model here so it would be something like that your wires would come around and go to your switches then when you'd flip over your model you would have your switches exposed here and you could hide your battery inside it too so your switches would be exposed there somewhere like that and just to turn on uh, the lights or something you just get a little screwdriver and flick the switch over so that would turn on your headlights say then you, you want to turn on your hazard lights your indicators turn it on there and your beacons flick switch you know you have control of five different lights from this switch here so that's another idea I have for one of these boards it would be pretty much exclusively for a static model it, you know your RC model wouldn't really make much sense to have the switches on it I don't think if you have any opinions or suggestions for this board you can head over to the forum there's a link in the description and you'll be able to cast your vote as to whether you think this board is useful whether it's something that you would be interested in and if you have any suggestions you can post them in the forum too you can also let us know what you think about 
adding this extra switch, this this different board that will include the, the switch. I'll make a video with this second switch in the future so make sure and subscribe so you don't miss out on that and I'll probably be installing when I get these boards made up I'll be making a video of a how to video kind of thing and I'll be installing one of these boards into a static model so we'll just have a instead of an RC model it'll just be a static model that you can flick the switches to turn on the different lights that you want on the model so like I said if you have any comments or suggestions head on over to the forum and you can join in the discussion there and that's everything so thanks very much for watching